Hello, I'm Paul Bradshaw. And I'm Lauren Gray. Welcome to Viral History, your weekly fix of all things history. Coming up on this week's show, I sit down with historian, archaeologist and writer Elizabeth Norton. And we continue our exploration of prehistoric skills and crafts with ancient artisans. But first up, let's go to the news. Dutch and British archaeologists are to excavate a 300-year-old shipwreck. The team will research and partially excavate the Dutch East India man, the Roosvik, this summer. The ship was on its way to the Indies with a large cargo of silver on board when she sank off Kent in January 1740. And the lost remains of the real-life Tess of the D'Urbervilles could be identified using DNA. Martha Brown killed her abusive husband with an axe, inspiring Thomas Hardy's novel. She was the last woman to be hanged in public in Dorset in 1856. Next up, Elizabeth Norton is an archaeologist, writer and historian of the medieval period. But recently Viral History had the great pleasure of speaking to her about all things Tudor. Towards the end of the 15th century there was obviously the Wars of the Roses with kings deposing each other and fighting with the rival houses of Lancaster and York. So the Tudors started from a point where the monarchy was very weak and the nobility was very strong. Um, Henry VIII's father, Henry VII, um, worked hard to reduce the power of the nobility. Henry continued that and all the Tudors brought in a, a process of greater centralisation with central government reaching out to the regions in England for the first time really. In what ways and how effectively was England governed during this period? Um, I mean, there was obviously the king at the top. Um, he then, or she, had their, their privy council who would then um, meet and then rule on their behalf. Um, you've got the nobility, although that was slightly marginalised in the Tudor period um, with the king trying to build on his centralisation. You then got in the localities, you got the gentry. They were the men who sat as members of parliament and dealt with the local affairs of the area and they would come to court as well. How did English society and the economy change during this period and with what effects? Um, it changed a great deal. The um, obvious one is the Reformation um, when Henry VIII attempted to divorce his first wife Catherine of Aragon and marry Anne Boleyn, he obviously broke with Rome and took the English church away from the Roman church. Um, it was a long process that didn't make England a Protestant state then. Um, Henry himself always maintained that he retained traditional beliefs, but gradually over the period, and particularly during the reign of his son Edward, England became a Protestant country. Next up in viral history, Healy Considine once again travels back in time to learn more about the rich and varied skills and crafts of our ancestors in ancient artisans. Hello guys and welcome back to the Ancient Technology Centre where I'm here with Ian who's going to be taking us through the process of making an Iron Age nail. So Ian, tell us what we need to be doing. Well to start with, if you'd like to get going with the bellows. Okay. Okay, so one, perfect. And what we're wanting to do is get the metal up so it's about eight or nine hundred degrees centigrade and then I'll start hitting it, so. Whilst I'm doing this, can you tell me, is there any truth in the fact that a blacksmith is called a blacksmith because he used to get so grubby while he was doing this? To the best of my knowledge, there isn't. Um, the word smith, if we break the, the name down, the word smith comes from the Germanic word smite, meaning to hit. And black was because of the fact that iron, when it came out of the fire, was black. So it was literally hitter of black metal. But as you can see, we do also get very grubby as well. Okay, it's getting there slowly. Do you want to... Uh... I'll pass over to your able assistant. Wow. Okay. Every blacksmith had their style of nail making. Um, this is the one that I have been shown 
and certainly it's been around for as long as the guy who showed me how to make it uh, has known. Is it the most effective way of doing it, even in comparison to modern ways? No. Um, traditional, well, modern nails are made with machinery and can do thousands and thousands in a second. You used to have professional nail makers, and one of them would have been expected to be able to do between two to 4,000 nails in a week. This method, in a modern forge, will get you um, about... Um, maybe a thousand if you're really really lucky 1500 in a week so so about half then about half yes um, in the early iron age though when nails first started being made because the metal was so expensive even if a nail came up bad they would still find a use for it though so nothing was wasted at all Okay, so just straighten that up and then we're ready to make sure it fits into our tool. Oh wow, so they're all measured? All measured. Um, that's partly thanks to the, to the Roman Empire where everything was regimented and everything had its place and its order. So for this next bit I'm going to be needing Alistair to come along with his, the chisel and hammer and just be able to start cutting the, the nail off so we can snap it and then put a, a head on it. So it's a really quick process. It is quite quick. I mean, in, in a modern forge, I can be do, doing the nail in a couple of minutes um, because I can get to much higher temperatures. Whereas in this one, when we're sort of really going for it on good conditions, then three or four minutes for a nail. Okay, that's it. The hammer. And would this have been a two-man job then, basically? Probably would have been. I mean, you had... In um, blacksmith shop, you had someone called a striker. Whoa. A striker who was his job was basically the heavy hitter. Whoa. Perfect. And so he would come along, and just if extra metal needed moving or something needed doing quickly, he would be there with a big hammer to get it done. Two seconds. There we go. There we have one still glowing blacksmith that made nail. Brilliant. Crikey me. Well, thank you so much for showing us that. It was a really quick process. Thank you, Ian. And we'll see you guys next week for another episode of Ancient Artisans. Next up, here's Marguerite with On This Day. Today in 1895, Oscar Wilde was convicted of the love that dare not speak its name. Well, that's about it from us for this week. Feel free to hit the subscribe button, follow Viral History on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram, like this video and tune in next week. And remember, what's past is prologue. See you in seven days. Next up, Elizabeth Norton is an archaeologist, writer, and historian of the medieval period. <laughs> uh, well, thank you so much for uh, showing that. Well, uh, welcome. Uh, Fucking bollocks. <laughs>